Hello virtual dreamers. Just wanted to note real quick before we start this video that it's seeming very likely that that leak has been basically confirmed. By the looks of the new images that were released, it's probably not going to have IPD adjustment as we were expecting. This is definitely unfortunate, but it doesn't really take away from the overall message I was gonna get across in this video. I just wanna let you guys know ahead of time because some of the things I say may seem a little bit odd with the new information. Thank you very much for understanding and I hope that you can still enjoy the video. Come on, Oculus, you're literally a price drop and ergonomics upgrade away from hitting it out of the park. Please don't go off the right track at this point. Hello, Virtual Dreamers, Gregory here. As you could probably tell from the thumbnail, there's a supposed new leak of the new version of the Oculus Quest to discuss. While I'm sure this will be a little boring for my PC Master Race 2080 Ti Core i9 Warriors out here, we have to talk about this, since the vast majority of the headsets people own are the cheaper units and the next generations of VR gamers and developers will be born from the kids, teens, and curious onlookers who pick the Quest, PlayStation VR, and Rift S tier devices as their first headsets. With that in mind, what was up with my comments at the start of this video? To sum it up simply, I see the Quest form factor as the closest thing available to a Goldilocks Zone VR headset that could bring VR to the masses in a big way. At $399 for the 64GB model, the Quest is one of the cheapest ways to get 6 degrees of freedom VR for people who don't have PlayStation 4s or gaming PCs. Being standalone with easy to use interpupillary distance adjustments means that it accommodates the greatest range of users since you don't need to set up base stations, cameras, or PC software to get right into the experience. Throw in the portability and the versatile hybrid PC usage nature, and it's right on the edge of greatness here. Of course, there are a few things that I still want from the Quest form factor that we just aren't getting. $399 is a great price, but it's still at that new console price level rather than the $299 Black Friday sale and $199 impulse buy price points that could push it into casual buyer ranges. Also, it'd be nice if we could see greater volumes for all VR headsets to go along with the uh, sweet prices. Quests and indexes are way too hard to get right now. Even specs-wise, I do think hitting at least 90 hertz would be a great help for people who suffer from motion sickness, though I could take this back or leave it in the early days. Really though, I think many Quest users, myself included, would say that improving ergonomics so that it's comfortable to use for long periods is the topmost wishlist item. These are all basically logistics issues, so there are no technical limits stopping this headset from happening. At a quick glance, this could possibly be what we're getting out of the new headset we're seeing from these leaks. So what's the holdup? Unfortunately, when you go beyond that quick glance, there is one thing this leak points to that could throw a wrench in all of the fun. There's no IPD adjuster. While it could just be that it's not visible in the render and is on top of the headset, Experience with the Rift S gives us reason to be afraid that we're going to see Oculus repeat the same issue with the Quest device that they did with the Rift S. Not having physical IPD adjustment. That's a big deal since a lot of people would be left with poor or unusable experiences with the new headset if they make this choice. When you're possibly right at the edge of hitting the perfect balance for the consumer, it seems like a darn shame to have that negated by one big step back. I do have to admit this is a little bit worrying. Time will tell whether or not this leak will be confirmed and if the worst case scenario here ends up coming to pass. But regardless of what ends up happening, I want to remind everyone that we are still closer now than we ever have been in the past to the ideal situation for VR headsets. Just four years ago, there was basically no way to get a consumer VR headset for just $399 if you didn't already have a gaming PC and console. The best you could do was buy a cheap Android phone and some cardboard, but all that got you was an experience underwhelming enough that many worried it would, and possibly has, poison the well of VR for many out there. Compared to that, we currently have 6 degree of freedom headsets that are basically an ergonomics and iterative spec upgrade away from becoming the default for virtual reality, and arguably even augmented reality all it's at it. Going by that pace, the kinds of headsets we're all dreaming for right now 
will be Walmart bargain bin fodder in just a few years. Which, speaking as someone who spent a good chunk of their childhood playing games from those bins, or from the under $15 section at GameStop, or who ended up having to save their lunch money for months to buy a DS, it's good to know that that crowd will soon have a great VR experience within their reach. Here is hoping that the roller coaster ride of announcements and releases that puts that experience in their grasps comes to a close sooner rather than later. Next time on Virtual Dreamers, we'll be going over the value of high-end headsets to the VR market. Be sure to subscribe, like, and hit the bell icon so YouTube Algorithm Sama gets that to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much for watching this video. Till our paths cross again, my fellow adventurers and dreamers. This has been Gregory, logging out.